Hello, you beautiful people, and welcome to this video of the Pentagon actually has a full document of what America would do in the case of a zombie apocalypse, including an entire section about how they would deal with vegetarian zombies. The more you know. So you've seen the title of this video and when you saw the word zombies, what did you think that meant? Maybe zombies that are really fast, so fast that they zoom. Maybe zombies that are part of the zoomer generation. And if you guess those two things, then you are so fucking stupid. What the hell is wrong with you? But no, zombies are zombies in a zoo. So they're animals in in a zoo that are zombies. So 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 they're zombies. It's some amazing wordplay, I can't lie. But this film is actually part of the Zaku, the zombie animal cinematic universe, which you would know about if you have already seen my Aquarium of the Dead video. Which you definitely should, by the way, it's one of my favourite videos. I love it even more than that random video of that cat meowing underwater. <laughs> and I love that video. But yes, this film is part of the Zaku, which has already set it up for greatness. And yes, there is a Zombies one, but the second one is just so much better. So I've just skipped straight to the second one because you, I'm an adult. I, I can do whatever I want now. I ate a whole bowl of icing at two in the morning last night. Is that good for me? No. Did I enjoy it? Not as much as I thought I would, but I did it because I can. So that's why I skipped straight to Zombies 2. <laughs> so let's get started. We open the movie hearing a group of criminals talk about how they're breaking into a zoo to steal some animals. All right, people, listen up. We're going in and we're taking as many animals as we can. And they're going to be able to do it so easily. I mean, this girl can teleport. Just look, she's right next to the gate to open it and let all the other people in. Then five seconds later, she's all the way over there. But they have someone on their crew whose job it is to just record everything to show the investors that they're getting their money's worth. I want you to take your camera and record everything. We need to show our investors that they're getting their money's worth. But why would recording it show them that? Surely they only care if they get results or not. But the main two people of this crew are Giselle oh, you stink! and Toronto. And you know he's cool because he vapes. <laughs> The other people are basically just expendable meat bags. But that doesn't mean that they aren't really cool. I mean, this guy has chains around his neck. It slows him down, like, a lot, but he looks so badass. Giselle is the smart one, though. She made her own tranquilizer. What's in that stuff? Snips and snails and puppy dog tail. Come on, tell me. It's a cocktail of my own creation. Paralyzes the animal from within. And the first animal we see is a meerkat. And five seconds later, it gets sniped by a tranquilizer dart. But as we can see, that ain't no ordinary tranquilizer. Giselle's tranquilizer is so incredibly powerful that it turned that meerkat into a 2D image. And then it turns into our first zombie. Then it's time for title card. Yeah! That's the first one I've seen a title card like that for a while. We also find out that this isn't even a zoo. This isn't a zoo, it's a refuge. I mean, if that's the case, then why is it called zombies? But then again, refugees wouldn't work as well. I love that this film knows what the audience wants and just gets straight to it. Because already within the first seven minutes of the movie, we have our first zombie attack. And see if you can find what makes this bit so amazing. Chain man! Now who's gonna carry all the chains? But just in case you missed it, this guy is literally being eaten by a meerkat plushie. <laughs> that is so amazing. Th then another dude on the crew gets his finger bitten off. It's it's absolute chaos. <laughs> but while this is all going on, Giselle and other unnamed woman capture a porcupine. And surely it's not just me that thinks her face looks super creepy here. Like that shit is terrifying. <laughs> but why would the investors even though they're not investing in anything, so they really should just be called buyers. But why would the investors need them to steal a porcupine? Aren't they all over places in America? So you could easily get one from just somewhere random so much easier. But they get captured already by park rangers with huge muscles and a huge fucking magnum. Jesus, we're only 10 minutes in and so much has already happened. 
It's great. We then get establishing shots as the sun rises. And how big is this bloody refuge? They've got a massive lake, massive forests, a massive savanna. It's almost like someone found a pack of stock footage and used all of it. We then meet our two important vet characters, Brooke and KD. And KD has just finished fixing a bike. Yo, good news, bike's fixed. And I wonder if that will come up in the story later at any point. But KD is very professional, as you can tell by the fact that his name tag is on Upside Down. Oh yeah, there's, there's another vet called Logan. And tell me this dude does not look like an elf. His ears even look pointed in like every scene he's in. Oh, KD fixed his name tag. Good for him. So the vets know that there are animal poachers somewhere on the ground. But they still want to release Rosie, the baby hippo, into the wild as scheduled. But before they go out, this happens. Wait. You're gonna go out there and you need protection. Well, we got tranquilizer guns in the Jeep. <laughs> These are for the animals. Just gives them huge shotguns for no reason. And are vets trained in like how to use guns properly? Is that part of the job description? So you'll be taking care of the animals, helping diagnose and treat any illnesses that they may have. And you'll also have to know how to use an AAC honey badger just in case the country Luxembourg tries to take us down again. <laughs> Those b****s just don't know when to quit. So we cut back to our two poachers and they're arguing about how they're going to escape. But that argument is very short lived because... It's so brutal, oh my god. 15 minutes. We are 15 minutes in. This, this movie's a masterpiece, but it turns out that the vet crew can't get any help with the poachers until at least six hours when they're going to be sending a chopper in. I wonder if that's going to come up later at some point in the story. And Toronto just bursts into the headquarters and tries to warn everyone about the animals. He tried to break into the lab. Who did? They're going to kill us! They're going to kill us all! Those scores! Look at the guns! They're going to kill us! Toronto? How many more of you are out there? Dead. Dead. We're all dead. Who's dead? Everyone! But they don't believe him because they think he's high. Because he... he because he vapes. <laughs> how do you know there's weed in there? And how much weed would you have to vape to hallucinate animals murdering all of your friends? So they all go back out to search for the other poachers because they just don't believe Toronto that the animals killed them. But before they leave, we see this. What if Toronto's right? And the animals come in here and try to get us? Then I guess you'll know what it feels like to be poached. Is that a threat? You can't tell me that isn't classic elf behavior. So they're on their way to the meerkat enclosure when we find out that these two unnamed park rangers are actually brothers. So now I really hope that nothing happens to either of them. They rock up to these three big rocks where the attack happened and you can see human remains everywhere and they still decide to get out and look for survivors. That man is literally a CG skinned alive body. I'm pretty sure he's dead. But just to be sure, he goes up and checks on this body that literally has human intestines next to it. That dude has seen some sh**. He just watched a meerkat come out of someone's mouth and had no reaction to it. What happened to you, my guy? One of the brothers then gets jumped and danced on by an aardvark, but they take care of it. Cut back to the vets where they're about to release Rosie the hippo back into the wild, even though it's still on the refuge. It, it, that's very confusing as well. And poor KD just <laughs> cannot figure out his name tag. Meanwhile, Brooke gets jump scared by microorganisms <gasps> because it turns out that the tranquilizer dart actually had noradrenaline in it, which apparently is essential for regulating arousal, attention, cognitive function, and stress reactions. Which definitely sounds like the cause of hyper-aggressive zombie animals. They just have too much goddamn attention now. But we find out why Giselle hates animals so much. This planet is wasting away. I'm just trying to make some cash before we're all extinct. Ah yes, the old Earth is gonna die in a few billion years anyway, might as well murder a bunch of animals. Classic. And now the porcupines that they brought back to the lab have escaped. So that's fun. And it's time for Elfman to prove his worth. And then literally five seconds later. <laughs> it's 
<laughs> so now they really are f***ed. This one foot tall porcupine just opened a f***ing door. But now Brooke is hiding from the porcupine like it's like it's a velociraptor. As if she couldn't just run up and kick it full pelt out the window. She obviously gets found and tries to defend herself with a book called Mad Disease. Which is very clever. And gets a quill through the hand. But she gets revenge pretty quickly. <laughs> I'm just gonna let that line linger in the air a little bit. Like, the bad fart that it is. But somehow the baby porcupine got into the locked room where the two captured poachers are and is now eating the camera woman's face off. And we get to see it, it's insane! But don't worry, the animal that chewed its way out of a cage is now being held firmly under a random bucket. Makes you wonder why they don't just transport tigers and that in huge buckets. They're clearly superior. Back to the vet squad, they've finally released the hippo. Oh, that's adorable. That's really cute. But danger isn't very far away. Jesus Christ. Why do they have hundreds of rhinos? The other crew arrives to save them, and they do. Or they at least save the important one. The other guy gets turned into paste. We then have an epic chase scene with the rhinos. And rhinos can run up to 34 miles per hour, which is actually f***ing insane. That, that's fast as f***. But that car should be outrunning them easily. They do end up crashing though. which ends up destroying the jeep and killing the other random brother park ranger man. Brooke then decides to let Giselle out in order to help create an antidote, as long as Giselle doesn't hurt her, which is a fair thing to ask for. But the first thing that Giselle does when she gets out is go straight for the cabinet filled with loads of guns, and Brooke says nothing. Where is your self-preservation, Brooke? But it turns out the toxin doesn't affect humans. I was just about to take a blood sample of it to see if the toxin you shot that porcupine up with got in my system too. Even if it did, you're immune. You don't know that. I made sure the toxin didn't kill people when I created it. Well, how though? How can you make a tranquilizer dart that only affects all animals and not humans? Surely it should at least act like Ket on steroids. She, ma she makes the antidote using enzymes from human blood. The enzymes necessary to reverse the toxin is human blood. Even though, surely a lot of other animals share a lot of the same enzymes as we do. But whatever. We also find out this. At least two weeks. How do you know that? Your blood sample gave it away. Gave what away? You really don't know? I'm pregnant, aren't I? Brooke is Pregurganent. I wonder which character now has the biggest chance of survival. They also get attacked by the porcupine again. I don't think it's in here. and somehow that kills it. The other porcupine got exploded, but all they had to do was throw that one out the window. KD then hits us with the most rizzed up stare possible. So now that their Jeep is gone, they're gonna have to walk back to headquarters, but they stumble across a bunch of animal skeletons, even though we have never seen any two infected animals try and fight each other. But in order to avoid whatever zombies are about, they decide to kayak across the lake and we get the best moment in cinematic history. Ah, great. The poacher wants to make friends while we're at a zoo, surrounded by zombie animals. Like zombies. It's, it's, it's beautiful. But then, the worst thing possible happens. But now everyone is finally reunited. But it turns out that the antidote doesn't even f***ing work. Giselle lets it slip that Brooke is pregnant. Brooke, what are you doing? It's fine. No, this is too heavy. You can hurt your baby. Baby? 
they already established that she's like two weeks pregnant. How the f would moving a desk hurt it? And you didn't care about the baby when you let her go first into a room with a murderous porcupine. But now everyone is back in the headquarters, but they still aren't safe. There's something in the bathroom. Gators. And now it's absolute chaos. They can't shoot it because Do you got any more bullets on it? It's useless. That's right off of like tic tacs. Crocodiles are immune to bullets, apparently. But now they figure out how to make an actual cure. The cure will only work in human blood. I thought I could make a synthetic substitute, but it won't work outside of our system. Not in a dart, not in a syringe. Give me the cure so I can put it in me. No. That's right. In order to cure the animals, they have to eat a human that has a cure in their veins. Now I'm no scientist, but that seems like bullshit. So Giselle runs to get the cure to save everyone. Like a hero, like what a redemption arc she's had. <laughs> oh, never mind. How the f do you get leg swept by a crocodile? They manage to kill the crocodile by bashing his head in with a fire extinguisher. Bullets can't pierce their hide, but a man-powered fire extinguisher to the head in a few hits, that can do it. That, that's just fact. But the chopper is arriving. Our ragtag team is finally going to be able to escape and live happy, fulfilling lives. What's that lion doing? So now the pilot is dead, and don't even get me started on how the chopper took so long to get there because they were apparently arranging a whole team of like medics and stuff, and it ended up just being one guy. But we'll move past it. But now it's the forces of nature versus three stupid humans. Dispatch. It's not possible. We've cut the line. Do we have any other weapons? Hey, you think we've got some kind of hidden arsenal around here? Well, Yes, you have that box thing filled with shotguns in the other room. So here we go. The plan is for all three of them to inject themselves of the antidote and sacrifice themselves to save the animals, which is already so stupid. But in order to protect the baby, Toronto injects himself with all three antidotes. So Toronto sprays himself with pheromones and uses the bike that KD fixed up to lure the animals away. And I am genuinely surprised that the bike like came back up again. Very few movies like this actually have setups and payoffs. And very few movies like this have this level of self-awareness. And another thing, the kids you're gonna have, don't name it after me. Toronto's a stupid name. I appreciate it. Toronto sets off, all the animals follow him, and now he's on a random airfield, somehow. A couple gets into the chopper and sets off whilst Toronto is viciously ripped apart by legions of hundreds of animals. And somehow, his body, a singular man, was able to feed every animal in the refuge. And now, they're all cured. The cure is working. But all is still not safe. There's even more goddamn meerkats on the chopper. <laughs> and my guy beats the ever-loving shit out of one of them. Okay, now they're safe. They managed to escape into the sunset, and that's it. This film is non-stop insane action from start to finish, and I love it. I, I, I genuinely like this film. It's got that low budget, bad acting, and stupid plot charm, with fun characters and insane kills to keep it really enjoyable, especially with a group of friends. I'm really looking forward to the future of the Zaku, and I get the feeling that there will be more. I mean, Aquarium of the Dead, which is the latest film in the franchise, came out in 2021, so it's very possible that we'll get more, and I want to be on the front lines of that. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel. I really, really do appreciate it, and if you do, then I will personally message Glenn Miller, who's the director, and try to get us all cameos in the next Zaku installment. Have a great day.